Welcome to Crow Park ahead of the Alliance League final this Sunday between Kilkenny and Tipperary in Nolan Park. Brendan Maher of the Premier County is with me. Brendan, you've won All-Irelands, you've won Munster titles, but you've never actually won a league. Does that kind of bother you? Does that annoy you? Is that a motivation going into this final? Because, you know, you want to win every competition out there and this is one you haven't won. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's that, that one medal that has eluded uh, a lot of us, I suppose, that came onto the scene in 2009. Um, the last uh, league final win would have been 2008 against Galway. So um, I've played in four finals. This will be number five, but unfortunately I've had four defeats. So um, that's definitely extra motivation. But, you know, it, it would be unfair, I suppose, for us to be putting an emphasis on, th on that because there's a lot of players that haven't had that experience. And this is a first final for a lot of them. So we're very much approaching it kind of with a new freshness. And um, this is a new group. Um, and no different to Wackel Kenny are they have a lot of new faces as well so it's uh, it's it's a new kind of a fresh kind of test for us and um, we're just kind of treating it as what it is rather than thinking about the past. What have you taken from the league this year because it's a bit different I guess when you're coming off the back of not winning the All-Ireland having lost the league final last year and just plain and simply an earlier start this season I mean the league and people I don't think really thought about it much was a bit different in that sense this year um, but what have you taken from it? Is there any difference to last year? Is there positives, negatives, etc.? Um, yeah, I suppose the, the difference being obviously the earlier start um, meant that training was a little bit more intense in the, the earlier part of January, whereas you would have had those few weeks in February to get yourself right. Um, so everything kind of came at us pretty quickly and it, it meant that you had to hit the ground running. So we got a, a bit of work done before Christmas as well. And um, I suppose what we've taken out of the, the, the Alliance League overall would be that we've blooded new faces, you know, there's been lots of new guys that have gotten their chance, gotten their opportunity and have taken it. So it, we've strengthened our panel, I think, and we have guys now that will be available and it makes the, the competition, I suppose, um, even more healthy that the guys are, are looking for that, that number of jersey, you know, whether it's 1 to 15 or even a, a place under 26. So um, we're in a good good position. I think it's, it's, it's positive for us at the moment, but... I think when we're we're now in a final, we want to we want to win it, and if we don't, obviously it'll be seen as a disappointment. So, um, lots to look forward to, but I think this Sunday is is a big one. I'm not sure if last year's league final has any relevance, but are you looking back at that and thinking, okay, we didn't perform that day, and the season never quite went right for us afterwards? Granted, you only lost by a point to Galway in an All Ireland semi final with one of the greatest players we've ever seen scoring one of the greatest points we've ever seen. So you weren't that far away, but. Is there lessons to be taken from that or is that completely irrelevant? No, it's not completely irrelevant because we would have spoken about our approach last year in the league. We trained very hard in between games and we ended up maybe overtraining to a certain extent. So we took some learnings from that this year where we've we've pulled back a little bit in training in, in, in midweek um, to make sure that we're fresh for the games. Um, we've still, you know, have injuries that will occur and that's just the nature of it. Um, but I suppose, you know, it, that the learnings that we took from that league final defeat last year and and the effect that that had on us, I suppose, um, for the, the remainder of the season, um, it was definitely something that was in the back of our minds approaching this year. And I think the management credit to them have, have handled our, our training schedule very well and they've found a balance of getting the work in, but also not overdoing it with players and keeping players fresh. We've seen with counties in the past, if you're trying to defend a title and it doesn't happen, a blame game starts during the winter and maybe fans get on top of you. That didn't quite happen with Tip this year, and rightfully so, and thankfully so. Did that make the winter easier? To, does that make it easier for you to motivate yourselves to go back and try and reclaim the title? Yeah, a little bit easier, I suppose. I, I've been involved in a few years where, you know, the winter months have been tough and you're just constantly getting it in your ear about the disappointment and how bad we were and, you know, <laughs> the, the failure. They, they the sometimes before. can go over the top and tip. They're not the <laughs> only ones, but they are one of the primary ones. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, I, I have to say that the support we've been getting from, from the Tipperary public has been huge over the last number of years. And um, in fairness to them, they, from the first day down in, in Cusick Park in Ennis, um, this year, our first game out, we had great support down there and we've had it right through. And hopefully we'll we'll get it again on Sunday. I think it'll be near packed house down in Nolan Park. So hopefully the tip people will make the short journey down. And Michael Ryan has the backing of the fans, which I know internally in the squad might not seem like that big a deal. But if they don't turn on you, it's a good thing. And that means he's had the freedom to try out a few things during the league. How important is that given the format of the championship and the fact that you'll play four weekends in a row? You're the only county who don't get a break in that kind of run of four games. Yeah, um, it's it's huge, I suppose. They've been very clever in the way that they've approached um, the last number of weeks and in that 
they're very much trying to replicate what's going to happen in Munster Championship, but also we want to win every game and we want to, we're lucky enough now that we're in a position to, to win uh, a final. So um, it's been testament to the management team and to the whole backroom team and the work that they've been putting in. I know um, we're lucky enough that we play a game on a Sunday and we get to relax until maybe a gym session on a Monday night, whereas backroom team, medical team, they're on a con call Sunday night, Monday morning, Monday night, organising what, who's training, who's injured, what's going on this week. So the work that they do is is probably above what the players are doing in terms of time. Um, so I think that they deserve huge credit for the way that they've approached it this, this, this campaign to date. And uh, I think the players have been benefiting because of their, their work. Are you noticing that guys who might have been numbers 20 to 26 or beyond in a squad are now that bit more incentivised? And even younger guys who've played in the league, like Billy McCarthy, Keane Darcy, Barry Heffernan, Adam Flint, Ger Brown, um, the goalkeepers Mooney and Hogan, who knows will be number one there, that they are now kind of thinking, well, there's so many games, we're going to need a bigger squad. So maybe there is a bit more of a kind of a intensity about the squad. There's a bit more of an enthusiasm about the squad because guys who wouldn't normally have got championship games before now have a chance this summer. Definitely. Um, it's not only the new structure, but I think, that, again, coming back to the management team, they've been very honest in saying that the guys that are going to perform or are performing in the training pitch are going to get their chance. And they've been true to their word. Anyone who has been performing in Dr. Morris Park down in Turles has got their chance. Most recent would have been Willie Connors, who started his first game against Limerick on Saturday night. He only joined the panel a month ago. Um, and he's been performing really well in training, so he gets his chance. And that's the way that they've said it was going to be, and they have followed through with their words. So as a player, you know you're going to train, and if I perform in the training pitch, I'm going to get the jersey. Um, whether that's number 8 or 9 or 10, or if it's on the 26, you know you're in with a chance to end up playing. So um, it's it's a mixture of guys realising that there is more of a need for a panel, but also the, the honesty and the... You know the, the clarity from the management that perform in the training pitch, you'll get your chance. And Jason Ford is really after stepping up this year. He was always talented, but people maybe forgot how young he is. How important is it to have a guy like that who is consistently performing and doing what he's doing? Yeah, Jason's had a, he's been our standout player, I suppose, um, throughout the Alliance League. It's been it's been common, I suppose, over the last number of years. His his talent and skill has always been there, and you know Jason would say himself that he maybe. Physically, he needed to do a little bit more, and that's what he did. He did three months of intense training in pre-season when nobody was looking and Tipperary weren't even together. He was training away on his own, and he's in fantastic shape, and I think now his game has just been taken to a new level because of that. Um, so great credit to him as an individual. He took that on, him, on himself. It, nobody told him to do it, and I think he's just getting his rewards now, and long may it continue. In the form of Ronan Marr, he's, he's trying to be the best Marr, isn't he? He is, yeah. Yeah. Um, Actually, look, he's still, I don't think people realise how young he is. He's been on the scene um, since 2014, so this is his fifth season or fourth season, and he's still only 22 or 23, so um, he was very young when he joined, and you know he's been on the upward trajectory, but he's a huge player for us, and no different to, to Porik, you know, I think they're, they're two really important player for, players for us, and what Ronan can do with a the ball then off the ground is uh, an extra, an extra um, asset to his game, but uh, no, he's doing really well. You should be at the Masters. Do brothers drive each other on? Is that how it works between the two lads? Is there a bit of a, a bit of a rivalry in the training matches and all that? Yeah, there must be. I think it's uh, it's it's. I'll tell you, it's um, it's interesting to see them in drills together when they they end up uh, one on one. It's it's uh, not a pretty sight. Um, but you know, look, I think we've two sets of brothers. We have the McGrath brothers in as well, obviously. But they obviously know each other very well and they like playing with each other and um, there's a great relationship. But I think there's a good relationship in the group in general between guys. Um, we're together. There's a, a group of us, I suppose, that have been together a long time, but the, the new guys that have come along um, have been very open and they've added a, a new freshness to it. And, uh, you know, there's a good, as I said, there's good healthy competition there between lads and it's it's a nice way to have training where we can go up, go up to the training pitch, take scalps out of each other, but when knowing that it's going to, going to benefit us come the weekend. I guess when you started with Kilkenny, we'll fin finish with the Alliance League final. When you started with Tipperary playing Kilkenny, Maybe they were on top, then you got on top, then they got on top again. And now I'm not quite sure where it is. So where in your mind is this rivalry at this stage ahead of the Allianz League final in Nolan Park in 2018? In my head, I look at it, I suppose, from since I've been involved from 2009 to now, Kilkenny are very much on top. It's 6-2 and one draw, I think, in, in finals. 
So uh, hoping it'll be six three after Sunday. But um, no, I've no doubt in my head, Kilkenny have been number one for the last decade, and I think we've been number two based on titles won and provincial and and even final appearances. But um, no, there's no doubt in my head that that they still are number one. And until somebody comes along and wins a number of All Irelands and and um, national titles, they'll be number one. Proper order restored as well. Tipperary and Kilkenny in a final. Not these upstarts from Galway and Waterford in the All Ireland last year. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> I've thrown a grenade at you there, but no, yeah. you, you know yourself. People are kind of looking and thinking, "Oh, the two of them are back." Is that how you feel? Um, yeah, I'd, look, I suppose there was maybe that perception that you know Kilkenny weren't the team that they were, and you know we were kind of we had a good team back a couple of years ago, but we're not sure where they're at now. But in our head, we were we were still always there, and we were close to being in all Ireland last year. Puck of a ball was the difference, and Kilkenny were no different. I mean, they lost an extra time to Watford, so. Um, they could very easily have went on and been in the All-Ireland final as well. So it's small margins and that's the way it is in inter-county hurling. And, um, this is the 10th uh, national final between the two sides. So I suppose over the last decade we have been the, the top two teams. And um, But look, at the end of the day, Kilkenny have been number one and we've been second fiddle to them and we want to try and maybe take one step closer to, to getting closer to them on Sunday. And finally, because finally, Jenny, our camera person's arms are getting very tired, um, <laughs> Nolan Park, is that a factor in this? I mean, how sweet would it be for Tipperary to go to Nolan Park and win in a final? I, again, I haven't quite looked at the stats, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure you've ever had a win in Nolan Park. No, never had a win against wow. Kilkenny in, in Nolan Park. Yeah. Um, we've, we played Wexford down there, and I won a Collins' match down there. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's definitely a factor and it's extra motivation for us. We want to put that right. I mean, we don't want to be known as the team that hasn't had a win in, in Nolan Park um, since we joined. So um, it's extra motivation, but it can't be our sole focus. I think it would be foolish of us to start thinking about those things because at the end of the day, it's a game and it's it's going to be 15 on 15. The rivalry and the tradition of the two teams will, will say that this is going to be a, a, a belter of a game. So it's, it's something that we can look forward to. And, but at the end of the day, we want to win. Brendan Maher of Tipperary, thank you very much. Uh, Tipperary against Kilkenny in Nolan Park this Sunday afternoon in the Allianz League final. You'll be able to follow the build-up across Off The Ball social media channels and, of course, on air. And, obviously, on Sunday, we'll have updates and reaction from the Marble City. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offering from Off The Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out. <laughs>